friends, Pam here. Welcome to my video tutorial for the Riviera T crochet pattern. This pattern can be found in the spring 2021 issue of Crochet Foundry magazine, but today we are going to go through the instructions to actually make this pattern in a child size six. So the fun thing about this pattern is that it is written according to measurements. So what this does is this allows you to use different weights of yarn using the same set of instructions. The only thing you need to be aware of is when we start this pattern we are working the yoke side to side until we get to the finished width of top that we want and then we start working down this way. So what that does is although it allows us to use any weight of yarn we want because we're using measurements and not specific um, stitch counts, the only thing we need to watch out for is that the thicker yarn weight you use, the wider the yoke might become. So if you want it to be more of a narrow band, like I am doing right here, you are going to want to use a finer weight yarn. I am using Lindy Chain that was provided by We Crochet. And this is a fingering weight yarn in a linen cotton blend, which is really beautiful for summer. And... Um, I really love the definition you get in the stitches from using a linen blend. In the magazine, I used Galileo yarn, which is a sport weight, so just slightly a slightly heavier weight yarn, and this is a merino bamboo blend, so still really great for warmer months, but it does give a little bit more weight to the garment and will cause the yoke to be slightly wider than the fingering weight I am going to be using today. So just keep that in mind. So for this part of the pattern, like I said, we're gonna start with the yoke and uh, we may as well just get started. So I am using Lindy Chain, like I mentioned, a fingering weight, and the hook size I decided to use for this yarn was an e-hook and I'm using my Odyssey crochet hook from Furls Crochet and the pattern in the magazine I used I believe an, a G hook for that one so just match the hook to your yarn weight to make sure you get the drape that you want for your top. So we are going to begin with a slip knot on our hook and then we are going to chain 31 stitches. So this is going to start us off at the bottom or one side of our yoke and the stitches will go up this way so we will be working along the length so we'll chain 31 for all sizes so there I have chained 31 chains and now I'm going to double curl double crochet in the eighth chain from my hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into that chain, and double crochet. Just like that. Then I'm going to double crochet in the next eight chains. One, two, three, So that will give you a total of nine double crochet stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then you're going to chain two, skip two chains, and work three double crochet in the next chain. One, two, one, And 
just like that. Then I'm going to chain two, skip two chains, one, two, and then double crochet two chains together. So pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, then I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop in the next chain, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through the remaining three loops. So that's my first double crochet, two together. Then I'm going to double crochet in the next three chains. And then I'm going to go ahead and double crochet two together. Then I'm going to chain two, skip two chains, and double crochet in the last chain. And there is your row one for the leaf yoke. So this width you see right here will determine the width of the yoke, or the, sorry, the length of the yoke. Now for rows two to seven, this will be the repeat rows for the entire leaf yoke. So you're going to repeat rows two to seven until you reach your final desired width of top. So let's start with row two here. So we're going to chain five, two, three, four, five. You're going to turn your work. You're going to double crochet the first two double crochets together. One. Two. You're going to double crochet in the next stitch. And then double crochet the next two together. Just like that. You're going to chain two. You're going to work two double crochet in the next double crochet stitch. Double crochet in the next. And then two double crochet in the next. You're going to chain two, and then you're going to double crochet two together. You're going to double crochet in the next five. and then double crochet the last two stitches together. And you're gonna chain two, skip two chains, and double crochet in the third chain. And that right there is row two. For row three, we're going to chain five. We're going to turn. And then we're going to start with a double crochet two together. And 
So as you can see, we're mostly mis uh, skipping over those chain spaces, but every once in a while we, were, we will work into them. We're gonna double crochet in the next three. And then we're going to double crochet two together. So you can see how we're starting to get that tapered leaf shape, how it's coming into a point here and then this one is growing out and then again this one is almost at the top. So here we're going to chain two and this is one of those instances where we're going to work into that chain two space. So we're going to place three double crochet stitches in that chain space. One, two, three, just like that. And that will be the bottom point of our next leaf. Then we'll chain two. We're gonna place two double crochets into this next stitch here. Double crochet in the next three. and two double crochet in the next. And we'll chain two. And now we're at the point where we have three stitches left at the top of this leaf, so we're gonna go ahead and double crochet three together this time. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop in the last stitch, yarn over, pull through two. Now we have four loops left on our hook. We're gonna yarn over and pull through all four of those loops, just like that. Then we're gonna chain two Skip two chains again and double crochet in the third chain. And that right there is the end of row three. As you're going, you're gonna notice that it takes on a bit of a, a pointed shape and that's okay because once we get to the part where we're seaming our top together and adding on the cuffs, it's all going to work out and straighten itself out. So don't panic if that starts happening. Now for row four, we're going to start with a chain five again. One, two, three, four, five, and then we're going to turn. Now we're going to skip that first double crochet that we did here, the double crochet three together, we're gonna skip right over that and put two double crochets in the next stitch. We're gonna double crochet in the next five. And then we're going to do two double crochet in the next. Oops. We're going to chain two. Two, so we have this little group of three that we started here. So we're going to place two double crochet in the next stitch. Double crochet in the next, and then two double crochet in next. There we go. Now we're going to chain two. I'm 
We're going to double crochet two together. This one, this leaf is getting smaller. Double crochet in the next. Double crochet two together. Then we're going to chain two, skip two chains, and double crochet in the third chain. And that's the end of row four. So you can really see how it's starting to take shape here. For row five, we're going to start once again with our chain five. And we're going to turn. And now we're back at that spot at the top of a leaf where we have three stitches left to work into. So we're going to double crochet three together. So you're going to pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And then you have four loops left on your hook. So you're going to yarn over, pull through all four just like that. Chain two, two double crochet in the next, double crochet in the next three stitches, two double crochet in the next, just like that. And we're going to chain two, double crochet in the next nine. So that means we're in the middle of this leaf. We're done the increases. Now we're going to double crochet across all nine stitches. And in the next row, in the next row, we'll be decreasing this one. So one, two, three, Four, there you go. Now we're going to chain two. Skip two chains double crochet in the third chain. And that is the end of row five. You can kind of see. There we go. For row six, chain five, turn, We'll start off by double crocheting two together. So we're at the midpoint here of this leaf, so now we're going to start decreasing. Double crochet in the next five. Double crochet two together. Chain two. Two double crochet in next. Double crochet in the next five. and then two double crochet in next. We'll chain two, 
We're gonna skip that last double crochet, which is the point on this sleeve. So we're gonna skip over it. We're gonna skip the next two chains as well and double crochet in the third chain. My hook doesn't wanna go in. There we go. And that is the end of row six. So next we have row seven, which is the final row in the repeat of the leaf yoke pattern. So we're gonna start off by chaining five again. We're going to turn we're going to double crochet in the first nine stitches. Now we're going to chain two. We're gonna start a new leaf, so we're gonna place three double crochet stitches into this chain two space. There we go. Now we're going to chain two, double crochet two together. double crochet in the next three. Double crochet two together. Chain two. Skip two chains and double crochet into the third. And that is the end of row seven, which you will see mimics row one. So we just worked nine double crochet stitches here as we did down here. Three double crochets into that chain two space. Here we put three double crochets into this chain. And then we did double crochet two together, chain three, double crochet two together. So now you're ready to start back on row two and keep repeating rows two to seven until you get to your desired final width. I will meet you back here after I finish making my leaf yoke. Now that I finished the leaf yoke for the size six, I worked it until it was roughly about 17 inches when gently stretched. And this is going to fit my five-year-old daughter. So you can definitely keep going until it is the width that you want your finished shirt to be when slightly, gently stretched. So now we're gonna go ahead and start working the body of the front panel of the shirt. While I'm getting my hook and yarn ready here, if you haven't yet, I would really love it if you could go ahead and subscribe to the Sincerely Pam YouTube channel. And this way you'll be able to see all the other video tutorials that I post. All right, so now we're going to be working along the unfinished edge of the yoke. Now, you might be working along the foundation chain, which is um, or th the left or the right side of the yoke. It really doesn't matter. Both are gonna give you the same result at the end. So we're gonna start off by chaining three. One, two, three. And then like I mentioned, we're gonna be working along the unfinished edge. So you're gonna turn your work so that you're working along one of the edges. Now what we're going to do is we are going to work in each of these spaces. Some of them are those chain five spaces and some of them are double crochet spaces. So you are going to work two double crochet 
in each double crochet, or the side of a double crochet, I suppose, like that. And then you are going to work three double crochet in each of those chain five spaces. And just like that. And then you're gonna work two again. And then three. So you're alternating two double crochet in one space, three double crochet in the next. And you're going to keep going all the way down. Or all the way across, I suppose. I've just finished row one of the body and you can see how those double crochet stitches work nice and evenly across an unfinished edge of the yoke. I did place my last double crochet stitch in a chain as opposed to just keeping all three in the chain space just so that way it doesn't really move and it secures the last stitch. Row two couldn't be easier. All we're going to do now is just chain three turn our work and double crochet back across in each, each stitch. We will then repeat row two until our T is measures as long as we want it to be minus two inches. For example, if we want a 13 inch length final t-shirt, we will keep repeating row two until from top to bottom our piece measures 11 inches. That's going to leave us 2 inches for the bottom band. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this panel and I will meet you back as soon as I'm done. So now that I've finished the panel, I've gotten to the length that I wanted minus 2 inches. So this is 15 inches long. I'm looking to go for 17 inches total. So what that does is it leaves me 2 inches for our bottom ribbed band. So to start that band, you are going to want to chain 10. Now make sure you don't chain two and pull your, don't chain too tightly, don't pull your chains tight or else you're gonna have a hard time working into them, just like a regular foundation chain. So one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to single crochet in the second chain and across. I like to work in that bottom bump. I just find it gives it a better look. But you can do whatever, whatever feels better for you. One, two, three, Oops. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. And nine. So now we are going to slip stitch into the next stitch in that back panel and that's going to join that bottom band. So then we're going to slip stitch again over one more to start the next row, turn our work and then we're going to actually skip over those two slip stitches and we're going to start single crocheting in the back loop only all the way across our band. And there you go, there are the first two rows of our bottom band. Now to start the next row, you're going to chain one, turn, and you're gonna work in the back loop again all the way across.
and then you're going to slip stitch in the next stitch in the panel slip stitch over one more turn and then skip those two slip stitches and work your way back up again And then again, chain one and turn and work all the way back down. And then you're going to keep repeating, working in the back loop up and down while slip stitching over one and then another one each time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to keep working that bottom band all the way across and I'll meet you back here in a moment. So here you can see I have worked all the way across the bottom of the panel on the Riviera T and I am ready to fasten off. So I'm going to go ahead because I ended at the, I guess it would be the top of the ribbing. I'm going to go ahead and just fasten off a long enough piece to use for seaming. So I kind of cheated a little bit and I worked ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that all the way through. And I also did the ribbing on the second panel as well. So both panels have been done and my little cheating that I'm talking about comes from the fact that I've already seamed the top shoulders of the two panels together. So I seamed them both from the outside in, leaving a nine inch long space for the head to fit through. So now I'm ready to go ahead and I'm going to seam up the side of the Riviera T. So when you're seaming your T, you are actually gonna start seaming it at the top of the ribbing. So you're gonna leave kind of like a split in each, on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my tapestry needle. And you are gonna to wanna to start seaming on the wrong side of your shirt. So make sure that your right sides are facing each other. Now there, with this top, there is no technical, like technically there's no right or wrong side because both, it is fully reversible, both sides are equal. So just kind of take a look and figure out which side seems like the prettier side. So I made sure that if ever I was changing or, or adding another ball of yarn, I kept all of my ends on the same side so that that way when I'm weaving them in, you know, you kind of get a right side and a wrong side that way. So I went ahead and threaded my tapestry needle and then I just kind of lined it up so that the double crochets are all even which makes it easier for me to keep an eye on whether or not I'm seaming equally along each side. You can go ahead if you want to and place a stitch marker where you want the armhole to begin or end and for this child size 6 We have about a five inch opening so it just happens to end right at right at the bottom of the leaf yoke so what I did when I was trying doing like a just a little fit test on my daughter I just put it on over her head that's why I had already seamed the shoulders and then I just kind of eyeballed where I wanted the arm opening to be Okay, so you're going to go ahead and just kind of whip stitch it together. If there is a stitch that you prefer to use when it comes to seaming, feel free. Do whatever you like. There's no real rules when it comes to this. It's just crochet, you know what I mean? No pressure here. So I kind of go ahead and I just split my stitches. And so I just kind of make sure that my needle kind of goes through the yarn 
instead of through the stitch. So instead of pulling the stitches apart and creating a gap, it helps to make it look a little bit more seamless. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just continue seaming all the way to the bottom of the yoke for this particular size. And I will meet you back up here after I have that all done. So I finished seaming up the side right here. You can see I flipped it so that the right side is out. And the seam is fairly well hidden. So when it is on and you're wearing it, it's really not noticeable uh, because you know, we were very careful to line up those double crochet stitches. So I went ahead and fastened off and I'll weave in the ends later, but I just wanted to show you what the armhole opening looks like. And you'll repeat that on the other side of the shirt, but first we're just gonna go skip ahead and work on the cuff. And the cuff is really simple because if you've already worked the bottom band, it is the exact same thing. So we are going to reattach our yarn. I'm just gonna pull through that and I haven't woven in yet. Pretend it's not there. So we're gonna reattach the yarn on that seam. All right. So then just like the bottom band, we're gonna chain 10. And then we're going to single crochet in the second chain and across. Okay, and then in the bottom band, we were able to work in each stitch across the bottom of the panel, but for the armhole, obviously, we don't have the same equal stitching all the way around. So you're just gonna work in each chain space and each stitch, and you're gonna follow the same, the same pattern of slip stitch across twice. So I'm doing it in those chains turn, skip the slip stitches, and then double or single crochet in the back loop only back across. And so you're going to work this all the way around that armhole opening. Now that I've gone ahead and worked that single crochet back loop only ribbing all the way around that sleeve opening, I am ready to join the first and last rows together. So I'm going to go ahead and once again in the back loops, I like to count over just to make sure I'm putting my hook in the right stitch because a lot of times I think I'm putting it in the first stitch but then I get to the end and realize I had skipped over one somewhere. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so I'm going to put them through the back loop of both my foundation chain and the last row worked, and I'm just going to slip stitch through. And then the next one, slip stitch through. And if, for whatever reason, you see that there's a bit of a seam there, that's totally fine because it will be on the underside of the arm. So unless you're waving around to someone and uh, they happen to be looking at your seam, no one will ever see it. So we're just gonna go, go ahead and just finish that up. Last one. Oops. 
And then I'm going to fasten off. And then of course I will weave in the ends. So there is the cuff on one of the sleeves. So now that that's done, you can see that I have the sleeve done. I've done the seaming along this side. I've left uh, the bottom ribbing split to give it just a little bit of movement and some comfort when you're wearing it. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this on the second side. So I'm going to go ahead and seam it up and then add that cuff. And then that will be it. That is the end of the Riviera T. This one is the child size for a full set of written instructions. You can find this pattern in my Ravelry and Etsy shops. I have links to that in the description of the video. And for the adult sizes, you can get it in the spring 2021 issue of Crochet Foundry Magazine or as a standalone at crochet.com. Links to both are in the description as well. So a huge thank you once again to We Crochet for supplying the yarn for this video and to Furls Crochet for supplying the hook. If you like this video, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to my channel and I'll be sure to provide more content for you on a regular basis. Thank you so much everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.